period with the pandemic and major transformation in various policies. What would you like to say about your tenure? I took over as the Adjutant General in April 2022. And ever since then, uh, we have had uh, numerous transformational changes, initiatives that have been brought in. And I must say, I'm very satisfied as I uh, retire at the end of this month with all that has been done uh, on this count uh, as far as the Indian Army goes. The AG's branch covers a huge, vast area of uh, operations related to the manpower and we deal with uh, aspects related to the uh, from the womb to the tomb as we call it within the army and uh, cover the manpower related policies the recruitment the implementation of various policy provisions the uh, discipline vigilance uh, the ceremonials and welfare health and well-being of our troops and medical aspects so all this along with reaching out to our veterans and taking care of their needs is a vast charter that I'm very happy to say that the branch has been able to perform with great amount of satisfaction uh, to our uh, to all the credit of all in the Indian Army. So I'd just like to highlight a few areas in which we have been able to do much change and those related to the Agnipat scheme which has been a transformational uh, reform in the overall manpower uh, recruitment and in the uh, policy per se which affect a substantial part of our Indian Army, the other ranks. It is primarily meant to create a youthful uh, uh, future ready force uh, with primarily a capa capability to handle all the future challenges related to technology and the modern processes that will come up. And uh, we have had about 70,000 who are now already inducted, trained and deployed with the uh, frontline units. Uh, they are performing extremely well from the feedback that we receive in the units in the field as also in various other duties and uh, are doing all the duties that our erstwhile sepoys uh, were doing at that uh, year end service. We also have about 30,000 under recruitment training centers and about 50,000 who are likely to be recruited shortly in this uh, year. As regards certain other areas, we have had uh, major changes related to the officers' uh, uh, recruitment or the selection system where we were facing major challenges and deficiencies of approximately 26% in 2010. I have just come down to about 16%. And now we see that year on year we are likely to achieve our targets. Uh, we have vacancies of over 2,000 every year. Uh, we have been able to achieve almost 2,000 this year, in the last one year. And uh, we were actually shortfall was happening because we were able to only select about 1,000 350 or so in previous years, but now that has uh, been built up due to various uh, measures that have been taken and uh, interventions that have been instituted at the recruiting directorate in the selection centers and uh, our capacities in these particular areas. Uh, as also, uh, we see that uh, the major challenge was primarily in the short service. And that also is in uh, the works to address the problem of uh, the attractiveness of the short service officers. And uh, we should be able to have much better selection system in the future. As far as the other ranks go, uh, we know that with the Agnipat scheme, there will be a major change. The recruitment related to this, uh, we have also modified and brought in the online exam as the first step. Uh, we used to have large, unwieldy rallies happening with uh, lakhs of uh, candidates uh, coming for our uh, rallies all across the board and very difficult to manage. Now we have, as the first step, uh, the exam, which is online, and uh, it has uh, addressed a number of issues related to uh, uh, the transparency and uh, detection of fraud, as also the various scams that could have been uh, there inside the system, and uh, that has been addressed to a large extent. We do see that uh, the uh, whole process has been automated 
uh, using the Joint Indian Army website, uh, the e recruitics uh, uh, software that has been there right through uh, till he joins the training center. It is all automated and transparent. As regards uh, the process per se, these uh, uh, process has been, uh, uh, you know, to a large extent, uh, found to be useful, uh, and uh, the uh, we find that there is uh, uh, this selection system and the uh, states have uh, supported in our various uh, rallies too, and these, the size of the rallies have been brought down. As regards uh, another area where we have improved uh, the uh, uh, our uh, efforts has been in the enhancing the footprint of our uh, women in the Indian Army. I must say that over the last uh, uh, couple of years, there have been enhanced uh, induction of our women into uh, the 12 arms and services that we have, including the artillery and the remount and veterinary corps. Uh, there are uh, approximately uh, 1,735 officers currently with us. There are uh, induction of on a yearly basis from what was about 80 officers, women officers. We have now gone up to 144 officers every year, almost 80% increase. Uh, we have brought in uh, changes in uh, the manner of uh, their uh, gender neutral policies as also uh, we see that uh, there are uh, permanent commission which has uh, happened for them uh, from the short service mode and we have also inducted on a yearly basis about 20 cadets, lady cadets into the NDA. All these changes are helping increase our uh, uh, capacity of having women in the army. As far as the other ranks go, we have had approximately 100 per year who are being taken into the uh, army uh, in the core of military police. Uh, these, this started in 2019 and we were the first to have women uh, in the armed forces uh, at the other ranks uh, level and I'm happy to say that they are performing extremely well. Uh, we have about 200 odd Agnivir women police now in the system and uh, we intend to continue this effort till we reach about 1,700 of them uh, over the next few years. As far as uh, the other area is of automation and uh, we have ensured the digitization of all our serving officers records. Uh, we also are completely digitized our uh, sol sol soldiers records in the centers. Uh, so all this process has uh, helped in the overall automation of our uh, whole army and uh, the veterans records too are being digitized. This is uh, happening as we speak, about 1.2 crore uh, uh, pages is what we need to do for very old veterans and such and that we intend to be able to complete by about April 2026 but we are already about halfway through. And uh, as regards uh, automation initiatives uh, for the uh, Agnivirs, we brought in a complete new system called the ASAN, the Army software for Agnivir uh, uh, automation and uh, uh, networking. And this is uh, helping us extremely uh, well insofar as able to map their complete uh, data and conduct analytics as also create a very open uh, transparent system uh, for their assessment too and enable that they get all their dues timely uh, through the uh, central pay office that has been created for them. As regards uh, online CE, I mentioned that's another uh, automation uh, automation uh, in, uh, initiative of the uh, AG branch. We find that uh, through this uh, system and linked up to the e recruitics model that we already had, we have improved the complete recruitment system in an automated manner. There is also the system uh, which we have introduced called the Indra. This is primarily to address the uh, all ranks including officers, Agnivirs, and bring them on one common database so that we can carry out our due analytics and uh, monitor all activities. So this too has been introduced uh, over the last uh, couple of years and uh, running extremely well. It is the backbone structure of all our automation of our manpower. 
then we have the uh, Dhanvantri system which has been uh, brought in in the to ensure the digitization and the automation of all our hospitals. This is uh, being completed and then we have uh, uh, be able to link all our hospitals so that uh, the data of medical reports and such like are available to all hospitals across our uh, military length and breadth. Uh, we also have the uh, Sanchai uh, system which has been created and automation for the uh, civilians and uh, uh, so we have a complete database of civilians and uh, then we, uh, uh, which was something which was lacking and now we have all our civilian employees are uh, in an automated system. Some aspects of uh, health and well-being. Uh, we have introduced uh, the early intervention centers. These are primarily for the children uh, at a very young age. Uh, we started in all our hospitals. About 20 hospitals have now got the EIC, the early intervention center. And this is uh, helping the young children to be uh, screened at a, a way uh, below the six months age. And then we can identify if they have had a, have any problems, any deformities or any such challenges which uh, like autism and that can be rectified at that stage and this is helping our uh, complete uh, soldiers and uh, families in so far as uh, their challenges on this count go and uh, we also have uh, created a lot of uh, initiatives related to the mental health of our troops. We have something called the Mansa which is the Mansik Sayata Abhyan and uh, this is something which is primarily uh, looking at the uh, the uh, areas of uh, the wellness centers in all our stations. We have targeted for ourselves about a hundred stations where we will conduct these, have these wellness uh, counselors, uh, psychological counselors and establish these uh, centers. In addition, we had conducted uh, a number of uh, camps and uh, in all our uh, about almost about a, a 12 uh, each by the help of the DIPR and the uh, Disha Kiran which is a private agency to go and interact on the ground with our uh, soldiers and identify the mental uh, uh, health issues which are there and people who face these challenges and who are shy to come up come up uh, and uh, uh, go to the hospital and identify uh, their problems uh, alongside the psychiatrist there. So this to an extent has also helped. I'm also happy to uh, report about the good work done by the uh, doctors and the staff uh, of the field hospitals in Opdost when they had to go to Turkey and uh, deploy for a, a, a rescue operation out there uh, when we had the earthquake in Turkey and they've done extremely well out there and uh, brought great name and fame to our country. As regards the ECHS which is uh, the uh, major uh, support system for our veterans uh, we have almost about 60 lakh dependency on uh, the ECHS system, uh, the almost about 25 to 30 lakhs uh, uh, ex-servicemen and of course their families and dependents. The uh, budgetary allocations have improved substantially. We were getting about 4,800 to 5,000 crores per year for uh, the ECHS. This has substantially shot, shot up to about 9,800 in the last financial year and approximately the similar amount which has been catered for for the next year. This will address to a large extent uh, our uh, pending bills which were there with hospitals and clearing up all the past dues and ensuring that uh, the uh, health care of our veterans is uh, addressed at a very uh, fundamental level and they can without any uh, uh, problem go across to the uh, hospitals and panel hospitals. In fact, we have been able to empanel uh, in addition to our over 3,500 uh, existing uh, hospital that we had, 3,387 actually, uh, hospital that we have empanel. We uh, have increased it by about 550 including five uh, All India Institutes of Medical Sciences which are now part of our empaneled hospitals in various places including in places like Raipur. A word about the discipline of the army. Uh, we have had zero tolerance for most uh, of these uh, aspects related to moral turpitude and financial aspects and uh, we have been extremely strict over the last uh, 
couple of years and brought in uh, extremely tight measures on this count and not spared anybody who has stepped out of line. Uh, a word about our welfare. We have uh, substantially enhanced our welfare grants to our personnel, our serving persons and including uh, the families, the uh, people who have been uh, disadvantaged. Uh, I should mention that over about uh, 10 crores we could give uh, for our uh, personnel and ex-servicemen who were affected in the Manipur uh, IS situation. We also had uh, have uh, substantially funded the early intervention centers, uh, where about 20 of these centers are now being funded through the welfare grants. We also have uh, enhanced the uh, investment of our uh, monies from the welfare funds into the big impact welfare projects across various stations. Almost 142 stations are now being, uh, uh, projects are underway in these stations and uh, uh, they are, uh, uh, we got about 20 crores in, uh, uh, allotted to last year and about approximately 23 crores this year for the conduct, uh, for the uh, development of these projects. Uh, we also are su supporting by approximately 130 crores uh, the education of uh, our, uh, dis uh, those who are uh, being dispersed through the various educational grants and uh, for especially the battle casualties, the VNREs and various loans and uh, such like required for the uh, computer grants and such like. Uh, we also are providing succor to those uh, who are uh, suffering from various penury uh, of our soldiers uh, who have got into a bad uh, system or they are not able to support themselves including some of our uh, Veernaris or our, uh, those who have uh, not uh, been able to manage their finances well. So they have ended up with problems especially when they have had uh, major problems within their families or uh, had uh, children who require major uh, surgeries or uh, medical interventions. So there we have been able to provide a uh, certain amount of support and uh, take care of them. We also have uh, enhanced the amount of money provided uh, to the battle casualties. We earlier we were providing about 2 lakhs per uh, battle casualty uh, as ex gratia. Uh, this uh, we are now enhanced it to 8 lakhs. Uh, from a uh, couple of years back, 2022, and uh, we are happy to say that this is helping uh, them on the ground. And also for our those of physical casualties too, we have enhanced it to about 2 lakhs. We also provide through the Army Group Insurance Fund uh, the insurance cover for our uh, officers and men. We increased from about uh, 75 lakhs to about a crore for our officers, the insurance cover, and uh, from about 40 to about uh, 50 lakhs for our uh, JCOs and other ranks. Uh, we also are extending the insurance scheme, uh, which have increased it for our officers and JCOs on the ground uh, substantially, and this also is helping them on the ground. We also take care from the uh, Army Group Insurance Fund, uh, various other uh, specially able children and various other schemes of providing uh, loans for uh, our uh, personnel. A word about the outreach that we do to our veterans. Uh, we are conducting uh, constant outreach, meeting with them all across the board. A substantive number of uh, camps are held, rallies are held in uh, various stations uh, and uh, we also, with the help of our veteran cells, sending uh, the uh, teams uh, to very remote areas also and uh, helping them, especially because they face various challenges, uh, especially with uh, uh, their uh, documentation, uh, spurs and their pensions and such like. So we are uh, reaching out to our veterans and taking care of them. We have introduced certain new measures like the chatbot Samban and uh, we have call centers to address the grievances like the Virangna Seva Kendra and uh, the project Naman that we have introduced uh, and these are helping to a large extent. We also engage in uh, providing skill training to all our retiring uh, personnel so that they can get fruitful, substantive jobs when they do uh, leave our service. What is the current status of the Agni Perth scheme and how are the Agni Perths are being employed and how is their performance? As you are aware that since uh, June 22, uh, scheme was launched, 
and then we had the first batch which was uh, recruited and enrolled in December uh, 22 uh, uh, onward, January 23, they entered the service. Approximately 1 lakh Agnivids have been uh, enrolled uh, in, the, uh, in the army. Uh, the, out of this, this also includes about 200 women. Approximately 70,000 have already been dispatched to the units, are performing extremely well in the, in the battalions and uh, are deployed in various field and peace uh, units out there. This includes about 100 women police also. Around uh, 50,000 vacancies have been released in this year, 2024-25, and uh, uh, the recruitment process is ongoing as we speak. We have just finished with the uh, online exam. The rallies are uh, started and they are ongoing. So uh, we do see that uh, uh, these are those about 30,000 who are there in the training centers currently and undergoing the training. I've, uh, we have been to many of these training centers and assessed the standard of their training as also the uh, inputs and feedback from uh, them on the ground. I must say that they are undertaking all the actions, operational and other professional duties just like any of the other sepoys or the sepoy recruits on the ground in the units and they have been completely inter, uh, integrated and assimilated into the units and uh, they are uh, wear the same uniform, they perform the same duties and so they are performing extremely well on the ground and the feedback from the units, that is from the commanding officers, the JCOs, NCOs and also themselves is that this is going well, they are performing well and uh, we do see that uh, uh, they are uh, in fact in some areas uh, shade better, 10% almost better in the physical uh, uh, parameters of their uh, uh, physical tests and uh, uh, they are almost 20% uh, uh, higher in their uh, academics of like the uptake which is there. So these are all, the, probably this relates to their focus approach and uh, which is going on and uh, uh, the also the aspect that the uh, at the training centers there have been more focused efforts and we have been able to introduce a lot of, lot of technology and simulators and these are all helping and uh, with the better processes uh, to improve the quality which is happening out there on the ground. How is the army addressing the short, uh, shortages of manpower and career aspiration and uh, how has the recruitment process been improved? Can you just talk as I mentioned, uh, there were shortages that we were facing right since 2010 and uh, we have been able to substantially improve our uh, capacity in uh, induction of officers. The focus has been on improving the intake of the, both the regular and in the support cadre with a enhanced uh, focus on the support cadre, which is the short service commission primarily, and the in-service entry. Uh, the, uh, incre we have increased the vacancies for our short service uh, from about 880, which was there earlier, to about 1,520. And this is going to substantially also enhance the way we will uh, be able to intake from, including from the NCC entries. Uh, as far as our selection boards go, uh, these, a lot of reforms have been carried out, increasing the capacity and to select and test uh, uh, candidates uh, in a more uh, objective and uh, improved manner. Uh, as far as automation and IT in the uh, SSBs are, uh, this will bring greater transparency and uh, make it more uh, uh, human error free. So these are measures which are helping us and various other measures are being examined to make the short service commission attractive and uh, these are uh, being processed with the government. Uh, the intake from serving personnel, that's the in-service intake, is also being uh, reviewed. Uh, we have had the uh, YTW uh, wing which is uh, training our in-service people. This has helped us to further enhance uh, the intake of our uh, in-service personnel, uh, improve the quality of theirs when they go for the selection board. And uh, we also have uh, the uh, service graduate entry uh, of, for the IA, uh, for the uh, ACC, uh, which is for our in-service uh, soldiers, and uh, this has been now sanctioned as a service graduate entry and will be in, under implementation in a very short while. 
as far as the selection procedures for the officers go, uh, there is uh, enhanced uh, outreach, uh, advertisements in TVs and social media. We have had uh, physical interactions in schools and colleges. Uh, we have had uh, almost 1,300 interactions uh, in the uh, last year and uh, uh, about uh, 200 plus uh, in the recent uh, past, about six months. And we also have uh, introduced organizational reforms to rejuvenate the selection process, uh, the reorientation of our uh, reorientation of our uh, SSLs training, uh, the GTOs who are on the ground, and uh, increasing the capacities of the selection centers by posting more of these uh, SSLs. We have also introduced filters uh, uh, for the shortlisting of candidates for the uh, SSBs uh, using either the uh, JE for the technical uh, candidates or the uh, PG CLAT for the, those who come in for the uh, uh, JAG entry of the uh, legal side and uh, uh, the cutoffs have also been kept at a reasonably high level. Efforts are also uh, underway uh, for uh, enhancing uh, the uh, uh, results uh, with a higher number of officer cadets inducted into the PCTAs in the last eight years and uh, increasing the number of SSBs uh, which are being under consideration. And the, uh, we have also uh, doing a reassessment of the stage one uh, in the SSBs. As far as uh, the technical uh, entries go, we also now got approval uh, from the uh, Raksha Mantri with regard to the engineer aptitude test, uh, which will be done by the UPSC for all our technical graduate entries and uh, a common examination filter to select and shortlist the best technical graduates uh, will be introduced and modalities of this conduct are being now finalized. Uh, we also improved the recruitment process uh, for the JSU other ranks, as I mentioned uh, Earlier, and the major transformational change has been bringing in the online uh, CE as the first step. And this has enhanced the efficiency and the objective manner in which it is conducted and reduced the number of uh, the rallies on the ground, which were becoming a little unmanageable. We also have uh, prevented uh, the malpractices uh, by the use of this technology and the Aadhaar, the automation, and uh, this has been a major crackdown that we have done on various fraud entries. In fact, in 2022-23, 1,870 such fraudulent activities were detected, out of which about th uh, over 1,500 were related to touting and uh, some imperson impersonations too. And we have registered FIRs in most of these cases, and uh, we have seen a substantive drop in such like uh, activities in the last uh, uh, recruitment cycle. And these have come down, and we have just now about uh, uh, one case of touting and about two impersonations and about 23 for fraudulent documentation uh, cases which were recorded. The tsunami Britain faced numerous issues and we hear of the various grievances as well and uh, what are the measures uh, that have been taken over the years to reach out to the veteran community and address their concerns? Uh, the veterans are a extremely critical, important, close-knit part of our uh, service community and uh, they are part of our extended family. And we remain fully committed uh, to address all issues and challenges faced by the ex-servicemen and their dependents. A total of uh, 55 lakh uh, ECHS beneficiaries with about 25 lakh veterans is what we have currently. And uh, the enhanced outreach uh, we are doing in about 200 uh, stations pan India, uh, with effect July 22. and. Uh, we have addressed numerous grievances uh, over the uh, period. Uh, the uh, latest policies and initiatives propagated through the are uh, prop propagated through the DIAV, that is the Department of Veterans uh, website, and uh, we have about uh, we have used the social media too. We are also on Twitter and in Instagram. So there is a method of passing on our. Uh, our policies, the changes, and anything which may come at. But we do understand that uh, there are a large section of the veterans who are not so technologically savvy or social media savvy. So we do have physical outreach into all those areas, especially the remote areas where our soldiers come from. Uh, various programs for connecting with the veterans include the, the introduction of a small uh, chatbot. Uh, it's called Sambandh. Uh, this was uh, conceived primarily to uh, at uh, uh, one of the stations and uh, 
it was to connect with on the WhatsApp basis. But now we have tied up with uh, with an MOU with uh, the Meta, and uh, we have a substantial uh, outgo related to uh, the uh, uh, Meta. For exclusive and insightful videos, subscribe to our new channel, ABP Live Premium.